body suited for their presence in heaven, but replaced in turn by their everlasting resurrection body, given, given at the time of Christ's return. Okay, so again, you're not when you die and you wait to rapture the church and all that, you're not gonna be a disin just a disembodied spirit. Okay. The sixth seal. The destruction of our surface and the darkening of our skies, verses twelve through seventeen. Uh, earthquakes, cosmic disturbances. Uh, great prayer meeting uh, the despair of earth sinners and the kings verse 15 and the kings of the earth and the great men the rich men the chief captains and the mighty men and every bond and, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and the rocks on the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of His wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Okay. So uh, it's not that uh, they don't understand the truth. It's even the devils believe, but uh, you know they they're not right. So there's an interlude in chapter seven. There's a sealing of the servants of God uh, in chapter 7. Uh, so God seals 144,000 Hebrew Billy Grahams, Hebrew who, a great evangelist, whoever you like is a great evangelist. Okay? Doesn't mean that other people, non Jews or others, are not going to be saved. He's just going to seal. These people are going to share the gospel. They're going to speak with God's kingdom. Kingdom coming. Uh, and the end times are coming. That's going to be their message. And uh, they, they will be able to spread this word throughout the whole world. Okay. So a lot of people believe that when the mess, when uh, we're able to give the message out, that's when the Lord's coming for like the church but the real point is these these people during the time of the tribulation will spread the message through the whole world so everybody will have the opportunity okay but uh, then remember in Jesus words then the end comes okay uh, Matthew 24, 14 is what I'm referring to. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all nations, and then shall uh, the end come. Okay. So a lot of people place Jesus' words like before the, before the rapture. But Jesus, when he was speaking there, he, he was speaking of the second coming, and he was speaking of the tribulation. Remember... Not until 1 Corinthians when through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Paul says, I show you a mystery. And then he talks about the rapture. Okay. So, uh, let's understand that. The singing of the servants of God, verse 9 through 17, chapter 7. Uh, there, so some good stuff to read. Uh, verse 17, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Then the seventh seal, Revelation chapter 8 through 11. And uh, the seventh seal consists of seven trumpets. Trumpets. So within the seventh seal is seven, okay. The silence before the trumpets, Revelation chapter 8, verse 1 through 5. Uh, uh, so it's not slightest sound or movement. You can hear, can hear a pin drop. Okay. Uh, as merciful and patient God awaits further repentance. 
but all to no avail. It's a God that takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. He wants to see the wicked. He wants to see his people saved. Uh, the silence lasts for 30 minutes. And number 30 in the Bible is often associated with mourning. Israel mourned 30 days over the death of both Aaron and Moses. The sounding of the trumpets and the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Verse 6, first trumpet, verse 7. Uh, it has been observed that plant life was the first to be created and it is the first to be destroyed. Verse 7, second trumpet. Here we read of a great mountain burning with fire. Uh, there. And uh, this, uh, some believe, may refer to a meteor, meteoric mass from the sky falling headlong into the sea. Uh, the result, though, is to turn a third part of the sea a blood of red color and bring about the earth of a, the death of a third part of the life in the sea. Uh, so, uh, third part of ships, uh, by the violence the waters produce, by the falling of mass. The third trumpet then, and the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamb. It fell upon the third part of the rivers, upon the fountains of waters, and the name of the star is called Wormwood. Wormwood. The third part of the waters became Wormwood. Many died of the waters because they were made uh, bitter. Uh, so sea salt before was contaminated. Now fresh water suffers uh, contamination. So uh, we need uh, water, but see, so we're seeing it contaminated. Fourth trumpet, uh, darkening uh, takes place. And uh, uh, some believe our Lord had this trumpet judgment in mind when he spoke this, these words. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Matthew 24, 22. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars, Luke 21, 25. Uh, Amos, in the book of Amos, there's Old Testament prophecy, it says this, And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. Uh, it was on the fourth day that God created the sun, moon, and stars. And I uh, hear the fourth trumpet. Uh, and you see uh, the diminishing of it. Uh, verse 13 says, And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, 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 to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. Uh, So uh, the fifth trumpet, chapter 9, verse 1 through 12. This trumpet unleashes the first hellish invasion of demons upon the earth. Uh, contained, this chapter contains both fifth and sixth trumpet judgments. Uh, and uh, very revealing about demonology. God has already made it known that there are two kinds of unfallen angels. There are the cherubim and the seraphim. Here he may be describing for us the two kinds of, uh, I mean, those two kinds of unfallen angels. And here describing for us uh, the two kinds of fallen angels. Uh, verses nine, chapter 9, verse 1 and 2 talks about their location, uh, the bottomless pit, shaft of the abyss indicates uh, that there is an entrance from the surface of the earth to the heart of our planet. In this chapter we learn for the first time of a place called the bottomless pit. God mentions it no less than seven times in the book of Revelation. Um, 
Unchained Demons and Chained Demons. Uh, uh, these demons, the chained demons, are demons attempt at sexual relations in some way to, in any way, to, in some way to mess with the DNA and mess with the genetic line of human life back in Genesis chapter 6. And it, the, the end result, whether it was through possession, influence, or uh, actual uh, crossing their, the line of, that they were given, uh, it resulted in them uh, at that moment being confined. And uh, they're chained demons. It's talked about in Jude and 2 Peter and 1 Peter. Uh, and then there's unchained demons. We see Jesus dealing with them. Some, are you going to judge us before our time? Remember when they talked to Jesus? That's what they were meant. Are you going to, we, is our fate going to be, you know, thrown in? Uh, chained. Their leader, verse 11, they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollo. Uh, the fallen star, verse mentioned in 9 1, seems to be Satan himself. Prior to this time, Christ has held the key to the pit. But now he allows the devil to use it for a specific purpose. Their torment, same verses three and four, and then the second part of verse five. The pain from the sting of a scorpion, though gener not generally fatal, is perhaps the most intense that any animal can inflict upon the human body. Uh, their duration is found in verse 5, <coughs> verse 6. Uh, horrible as the torment will be, God will place certain limitations on the activity of these demons. They will be limited as to what they may strike and as to how far they may go and as to how long they may do what they will do. Uh, their description, verse 7 through 10. Uh, and then the sixth trumpet picks up in verse 13 through 21 of Revelation 9. Uh, it unleashes the second hellish invasion of demons upon the earth. Uh, the four leaders loose the four angels. Uh, remember everything Satan does. He wants to copycat Jesus. He wants to copycat the Lord. Uh, he has everything God has. He has a counterfeit. Uh, God has four living creatures. Seems to indicate here that Satan has wants to have his as well. Uh, the great river Euphrates, evil began. It's where false religion began, and it's where it will come to its end. The mission is found in verse 15. The four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. Uh, one third of humanity is killed through fire, smoke, and brimstone. One fourth had already been slain by the fourth seal. Okay, so uh, massive, massive loss of life. Their number and the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000, thousand, and I heard the number of them. This mighty army would occupy territory one mile wide and 87 miles long. The description then is uh, given in verse 17. Verse 19 says, For their power is in their mouth and their, in their tails, for their tails are likened to serpents and have heads and with them they do hurt. You see their effect in verse 20 and 21. Uh, at this point over one half of the world's population has been wiped out. And what is the response of the survivors? Total unrepentance. 
and even intensified rebellion. Verse 20, 21 of uh, chapter uh, 9. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. See, they didn't repent of that. They just become more and more angry. There's an interlude, chapter 10, verse 1, through chapter 11, verse 14. Seven events occur between the sixth and the seventh trumpets. The message of the angel of God is found in verses 1 through 7 of chapter 10. Uh, so the angel of God, I saw... Another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head. And his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth. The voice, verse 3, cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth, and when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. Verse 4, When the seven thunder, thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. Uh, the vow, verse 5 and 6, the victory, verse 7. But in the days, verse 7, of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. Uh, verse 8 through 11. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. So he did. And, uh, and uh, he was to prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. The measuring of the temple takes place in chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. And then the ministry of the witnesses of God in verses 3 through 6. Uh, so, uh, the ministry of these witnesses. And I'll give power, chapter 11, verse 3. Uh, Unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days, clothed in sackcloth. These are two olive trees and two candlesticks standing for the God of the earth. Uh, devastation caused by their ministry is found in verse 5 and 6. So who are these witnesses? Some hold they are Elijah and Enoch. Uh, and uh, the evidence for that the, that people would give is that Hebrews 9.27 states that all men are appointed to die since these two men did not experience physical death, they will be sent back to witness and eventually to die a martyr's death. Some hold, though, that it, it would is that it is Elijah and Moses. Elijah, of course, because Malachi four, five, and six predicts that God will send Elijah during that great and dreadful day of the Lord. And then uh, Elijah appeared with Moses on the Mount of Transfiguration to talk with Jesus. Because Elijah's Old Testament ministry of preventing rain for some three years uh, will be repeated by one of the witnesses during the tribulation. Others believe Moses, and this is the evidence they give, because of Jude in verse 9, where we are informed that after the death of Moses, Satan attempted to acquire his dead body. 
so that God would not be able to use him against the Antichrist during the tribulation. Because Moses' Old Testament ministry of turning water into blood will be repeated by one of the witnesses during the tribulation. Because Moses appeared with Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration. Remember on the Mount of Transfiguration who they see? Uh, Elijah and Moses. And notice when they saw them on the Mount of Transfiguration, they knew who they were. And uh, they weren't they were not soul sleeping. <laughs> I mean, if we just read the Bible, you know, a lot of the questions will answer themselves. Okay. But they're martyred in verses 7 through 10. Uh, he's, the Antichrist is allowed to kill them. The word beast is first mentioned in chapter 11, verse 7 here. Uh, 35 other references to him in Revelation. Uh, he could not kill the witnesses until they shall have finished their testimony. Do you know Satan cannot touch one hair on the head of God's people without specific permission? God has your time and day. Paul uh, Paul spoke of this as well. Until I finish, say I finish, he says. Until these two finishes what God has for them to do. Until you as the servant of God finish what God has for you to do. Okay. Now that doesn't mean, well, I, you know, God wants me to do this, so I'll probably be done with that in three months. I don't want to die, so I, I'll just put it off. You don't know what all God has for you to do, okay? God knows. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom, in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Revelation 11, 8. In Jerusalem it is called Sodom because of its immorality, in Egypt because of its worldliness. Uh... So you see there, it just follows verses 9 and 10. But from death to life, verse 11. After three days and a, and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. And they stood <coughs> upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Verse 12, from earth to heaven. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Uh, verse 13, God's judgment. The same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men 7,000, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. Uh, and we'll pick up right there next session. Help us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm talking and looking at... Uh, Revelation chapter 12 and uh, 13. And uh, back in uh, 11, 19, and the temple of God was opened in heaven. So uh, the Bible speaks of the tabernacle temple in heaven. But uh, the devil is allowed to uh, reign on earth, Revelation 12 and 13. The devil in Israel, uh, he's hated, of course, he's had a hatred for the Jew Jews. Uh, and you see uh, that uh, in the first five verses, but verse three and four. Uh, uh, he is given at least five titles and subtitles in Revelation 12. Uh, verse 3, the great red dragon. Verse 9, the old serpent. Verse 9, the devil. Verse 9, Satan. And verse 9, the deceiver of the world. So, 
in uh, verse 4, Revelation 12, Satan sinned in Bethlehem uh, when he attempted to slaughter God's son. And then, uh, of course, Israel's rise. Uh, there appeared, verse 1, a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Uh, the rise with Jacob's twelve sons. Um, Israel's referred to as a suffering woman. Uh, the re world's religious system is referred to as a bloody harlot. The world's economic system is referred to as an arrogant queen. And the true church is referred to